All right, guys, so I have been getting a lot of questions recently about what speakers should I start off with when I'm getting into speaker building. And I think that's a very good question to ask because that's not a lot of information out there. A lot of people will say, just start off with a already known speaker build. So one that's already been designed for you. And I think that's good advice. So I'm not gonna tell you necessarily not to do that. But for those of you who really wanna get into speaker building and kind of figure out what to do on your own, these are some speakers to start off with. First of all, any full range speaker driver. Now here's the ND65-4, I've used these in a lot of projects, such as my emoji build and also my executive build. And these are pretty cool because they are very flexible in the essence of using a bunch of different uh, designs, whether it be sealed or ported. Um, now these are a little bit more expensive full range drivers. These are about $25 a piece but you can get as cheap as $7 a piece, which I used in my Kuzwall build and also my Ultimate Boombox build. Take a look at those. They're very inexpensive speakers. Even my DeWalt build, they were about $7 each. So full range speakers don't have to be that expensive and they can really give you an idea of what you can do with these speakers. It also help you mess around with boxes and baffle step compensation. The biggest thing to do with these full range drivers is to really mess with that baffle step and see how that affects this driver because that's going to affect your second your two-way and three-way drivers later when you decide to move up to that but first start off with full range drivers and just that no tweeters anything else just a full range driver all right now another thing that you can start off with are these now these are pretty cool look at buyout speakers from parts express these are buyout speakers that are actually tv speakers they have a bunch of different kinds on there they're very inexpensive they're under a dollar typically and usually under five dollars so very inexpensive now this these actually are typically um pre-sealed meaning you don't even have to build an enclosure for them they give you a lot of creativity meaning that you can do a lot of cool things with them build uh unique designs now you're not going to get always the best sound quality on them but they give you an idea of what you can do which is cool so i always say pick up some of these if you have them on if you have a little extra money or if you just need a couple of dollars to get the free shipping, throw some of these in your cart and start working with them. They're fun to do, and especially for like a kid. They're fun to work with, and if they get ruined, it's not a huge ordeal. Um, now, another thing to really start off with, and a lot of people uh, don't even think about this, are budget subwoofers. Now, here's a budget subwoofer. This is the Titan there's a bunch of different budget subwoofers. I, I consider really anything under $100 a budget subwoofer, but this one's like $10. So this is a real budget subwoofer. Now, why budget subwoofers? Budget subwoofers are probably the best way to understand box design. Now, using WinISD, which I've already taught you a lot about WinISD, you can start realizing what ported, you know, what ported will do versus sealed, um, what port noise is, and you can try out different ports with them and it doesn't cost a lot to really uh, test the speakers to see what's what's happening with them now i like the grs subs a lot those grs subs are typically under 20 bucks um, and those are really really good subs this is also a budget sub that you could use it's, it's very um, festive but you know take a look at the budget subs and see see what you would like to do and and go from there now, when you've figured out kind of box design, your port noise versus like where your tuning frequency is with your box design and your full range speaker, then you're gonna to wanna to move up to a two-way design. When you move up to a two-way design, stick with some of the speakers you already have. So if you already have the ND65-4, which is a full range driver, stick with it, and then stick with like a budget tweeter. Now this is the ND20FB-4. I wouldn't recommend this for anyone that's not Pretty good at woodworking or understanding um, how to make uh, accurate hole cuts because it is a rear mounted driver um, you can get front mounted drivers if you'd rather but uh, you know start then working on a two-way design now that you have your box design down you should already have an idea of the box size that this already sounds good in so now we're gonna put the tweeter in so we got a good idea of what sounds good with this now we'll put the tweeter in, and now we can create an awesome crossover for that two-way design. And that's going to be obviously more complicated, and then move to a three-way from there. So, guys, I, I just want you to understand that getting into speaker building doesn't have to cost a lot. In fact, I, I don't think it should in the beginning. Now, once you start getting really, really good at it, 
and you want to start designing your own designs and you start realizing if two-way designs are sounding good, then move up to the more expensive speakers. All right, guys, I hope that you uh, learned something. If you did, please give it a like uh, and a thumbs up. And as always, subscribe to the channel. We'll have more videos out to you shortly. Thanks, guys.